In this lesson, you will learn about the instrument flight rules. Expressed simply, the instrument flight rules, commonly referred to as IFR, are a set of rules for flights during which it cannot be assumed that pilots will be able to navigate their aircraft or maintain separation from obstacles, terrain and other aircraft by reference to features outside the cockpit. So in general terms, instrument flight rules exist to ensure that a pilot has adequate clearance from ground obstacles and that his aircraft is safely separated from other aircraft in the vertical plane. For flight in accordance with the instrument flight rules, navigation and obstacle clearance must be able to be maintained by its sole reference to the aircraft's instruments. And under the instrument flight rules, separation of aircraft from other air traffic is provided either by pilots receiving an air traffic control service or by aircraft flying at specified flight levels depending on their magnetic track over the ground. You should note that whereas all flights which take place in instrument meteorological conditions must be conducted in accordance with the instrument flight rules, flight under the instrument flight rules may also take place in visual meteorological conditions. Instrument flight rules are, as their name makes clear, a set of rules governing the conduct of an aircraft in flight. The instrument flight rules are quite independent of the prevailing meteorological conditions. So even though the instrument flight rules assume that separation from terrain and other aircraft can not be maintained by reference to features outside the cockpit, and that the aircraft is being operated by sole reference to its instruments, the instrument flight rules may still be followed, or imposed, even in visual meteorological conditions. In fact, most commercial air transport flights within Europe and the United States are under continuous air traffic control, and therefore operate within controlled airspace under instrument flight rules for the whole flight, irrespective of whether visual meteorological conditions or instrument meteorological conditions prevail. Now that you have learnt about the concept of instrument flight rules, let's pass on to the rules themselves. Here they are, as contained in Chapter 5 of Annex 2 to the Convention on International Civil Aviation. Scroll through the instrument flight rules and note that they take up scarcely more than one page. When referring to Annex 2 for operational or examination purposes, always ensure that you consult the very latest version of the Annex. In order to be able to fly in accordance with the instrument flight rules, aircraft must be equipped with suitable instruments and with navigation equipment appropriate to the route to be flown. Flight in accordance with the instrument flight rules must not be conducted at a level which is below the minimum flight altitude for IFR flight established by the nation whose territory is being overflown. Where a nation has not established a minimum IFR flight altitude, the IKO minimum level rules apply. These are that an aircraft flying in accordance with the instrument flight rules over mountainous areas or high terrain is to remain at least 2,000 feet or 600 meters above the highest obstacle located within 8 kilometers of the estimated position of the aircraft. Elsewhere than over high terrain or mountainous areas, IFR flights are to remain at least 1,000 feet or 300 meters above the highest obstacle located within 8 kilometers of the estimated position of the aircraft. For the purpose of adhering to the IFR minimum level rules, the estimated position of the aircraft 
must take account of the navigational accuracy which can be achieved on the relevant route segment having regard to the navigational facilities available in the aircraft and on the ground. Pilots should note that IFR minimum level rules do not absolve them from the necessity to adhere at all times to the overall minimum height rule, which stipulates that an aircraft must not be flown over congested areas or over an open-air assembly of persons below a height that, in the event of an emergency arising, would enable the aircraft to make a landing without undue hazard to persons or property on the surface. The only exceptions to all the minimum level rules just mentioned are when an aircraft is taking off or landing, or when specifically authorized to descend below the established minimum levels by the appropriate authority. In the lesson on the visual flight rules, you learnt about the rules governing the procedure for changing from VFR flight to IFR flight. You will not be surprised to learn that similar rules exist to cover the situation where a pilot wishes to, or is obliged to, change from the instrument flight rules to the visual flight rules. If he has submitted a flight plan, a pilot who elects to change the conduct of his flight from compliance with the instrument flight rules to compliance with the visual flight rules must tell the appropriate air traffic services unit that the IFR flight plan is cancelled and communicate to that air traffic services unit the changes to be made to the existing flight plan. When the pilot of an aircraft operating under the instrument flight rules wishes to cancel his IFR flight plan because he has encountered visual meteorological conditions, he must not cancel the IFR flight plan unless he anticipates and intends that the flight will be continued for a reasonable period of time in uninterrupted visual meteorological conditions. When operating in accordance with the instrument flight rules in controlled airspace, the IFR flight is known as a controlled flight and an air traffic control clearance is required for the flight to take place. The required air traffic control clearance is requested by the pilot by submitting a flight plan to the appropriate air traffic services unit. When operating in controlled airspace, IFR flights must comply with air traffic control instructions and with all the sections of Rule of the Air 3.6. Rule of the Air 3.6 deals with controlled flights, air traffic services, air traffic control clearances, adherence to flight plans, and communications. Rule of the Air 3.6 is covered by separate lessons in this CBT course. Unless otherwise instructed by air traffic control or approved in an ATC clearance, when an aircraft operating in accordance with the instrument flight rules is in cruising flight within controlled airspace, the aircraft is to be flown at a cruising flight level dependent on the aircraft's magnetic track over the ground. An indication of the correlation between cruising flight levels and magnetic track for IFR flight is shown on screen here. Note that different cruising flight levels are allocated for IFR and VFR flights. The rule governing the correlation between cruising levels and magnetic track is semicircular in nature because approximately half of the allocated flight levels are for aircraft in the cruise on magnetic tracks from 0 degrees to 179 degrees while the remaining allocated flight levels are for aircraft in the cruise on magnetic tracks from 180 degrees to 359 degrees. The semicircular nature of this rule is illustrated here. You can see that from 0 to 179 degrees, IFR cruising levels are at odd numbered flight levels, while from 180 to 359 degrees, the IFR cruising levels are even numbered flight levels. 
If an aircraft is authorized to employ cruise climb techniques between flight levels, the higher flight level at which the aircraft levels off must also be in compliance with this so-called semicircular rule. The cruising levels that we have just illustrated are to give you merely an idea of the full table of cruising levels. That table is contained at Appendix 3 to Annex 2 of the ICAO Convention on International Civil Aviation. Be sure to refer to Annex 2 in order to study the details of this rule. We show an extract from Appendix 3 to ICAO Annex 2 here. Be sure, though, to refer to the latest edition of Annex 2 when using the table for operational or examination purposes. The cruising flight level rule that you have just learnt about also applies to IFR flights operating in uncontrolled airspace, except when otherwise specified by the appropriate Air Traffic Services Authority for flight at or below 3,000 feet above mean sea level. An aircraft operating in accordance with the instrument flight rules outside controlled airspace is not always obliged to maintain an air-ground voice communication watch with an air traffic services unit. However, if outside controlled airspace, but within advisory airspace, or when otherwise so required by the appropriate air traffic services authority, an IFR flight is to maintain an air-ground voice communication watch on the appropriate communication channel and establish two-way communication as necessary with the Air Traffic Services Unit. This situation is amplified by the rules of the air shown on screen here. The pilot of an IFR flight operating outside controlled airspace but who is required by the appropriate Air Traffic Services Authority to submit a flight plan and to maintain an air-ground voice communication watch with an Air Traffic Services Unit, for instance, an IFR flight within advisory airspace, is required to report his position as specified in Rule of the Air 3.6.3 applicable to controlled flights. That completes the letter.